Thanks for staying with us. You're still watching The Ghanaian Farmer on Joy Prime Television. Whilst we're speaking with Dr. Asante, he made mention of crossing and pollinating. And so right now, we are going to be speaking with Mr. Fosu, who will be demonstrating and briefly explaining what that process means in rice breeding. Mr. Fosu, thanks for joining us. Thank so you too. So please take me and my viewers through what exactly we are going to do here or what we are seeing here. Okay. So basically what you see here is... Um, a rice plant that has flowered. Now rice is a self-pollinating plant in that both the male and then the female parts are all found in one plant. So in order to bring something out, otherwise if you allow it, it will cross by itself and it will give the same thing out. It is like, let's say, an organism crossing itself. So as breeders, we want variation. Yes. Therefore, we cast the male part of the flower out of it so that it will, re it will be remain with the female part. Then we bring a preferred male outside and then we dust its pollen onto it and then you get a product that is a combination of two plants and not one plant. All right. So that is basically what I want to demonstrate to you. Very what well. Is Please go ahead. Do. Okay. So first of all, you mm -hmm. start, it's, it's normally done early in the morning. Okay. It's unfortunate that around this what time? Part, around 6 a.m. you 6 should start and okay. the process is called emasculation. Okay. So in emasculation, you remove each of these flowers that you see, we call it a floret. Okay. So each one of them is what is going to give you your rice grain right. that you eat. So for you to take off the male, fortunately we can see some of the male parts have just come out. Yes. Okay, as you can see them here. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones I'm going to remove. These ones have already pollinated themselves. Mm. So I'll cut them off mm. and then remove the male parts of those that have not pollinated. Okay. Uh -huh. Otherwise, if you use this one, you are going to get a plant that is a self and not from a foreign uh, male. Okay. So you cut those parts. Mm -hmm. I'll just select my favorite flower. Very well. But before then, I have to cut those that have already pollinated. Okay. So that they don't interfere with my crosses. Otherwise, they will self it. Okay. So I'm cutting all those off. Right. After cutting them off, mm -hmm. then I'll pick my my panicle, the mm. one I want to emasculate. Mm. Uh -huh. So I'll pick that one and then trim it. Mm. Okay. So basically, that is what I'm doing. After trimming, you know, those that are at the base are not fully matured. Mm. And therefore, if you want to cross it, mm -hmm. you are likely not to get a viable seed. Mm. So we trim from downwards of it. Mm. And then there's one thing I had wanted to tell you. Fortunately, rice does not pollinate in one day. Mm. So the pollinating starts from somewhere. As you can see, these flowers yes. have opened. Yes. But the rest have not opened. Yes, please. So those are the ones I'm going to must okay. So, so I'll you cut, cut the, off the ones that have opened. Those okay. that are fully matured. All right. uh -huh. okay. And then I'll leave those that are okay for emasculation for today. Mm. And then I'll cut the bases also. So let me cut the base. Okay. Um, so these ones that are left mm -hmm. are the ones that are okay for emasculation. Okay. So emasculation is just, mm. yes, you can help me. Okay. So emasculation is just the removal of the male part mm. of the flower, mm. leaving only the female part. Okay. Okay. So as you have trimmed to get your, your, your flowers of your choice, mm -hmm. You are then going to cut each of the flowers open mm. and then you use what you call an emasculator. So an emasculator is more like a suction pump okay. that is going to suck the male right. part out of it. Okay. Yeah. So you take your, your, your plant mm -hmm. and then you start cutting the, the tip. florets. Okay. Yes. If you cut deep, you are mm. going to cut the male part. Okay. So I'll cut only the, the top. Okay. okay so that I can get something that I can easily suck the meals off. Mm. Okay, so I think this is enough for right. now. And I have to do to make sure that all of them are opened mm. and then the meals are removed. Even okay. if you leave one, mm. it is likely going to produce a lot of pollen that will solve it. Okay. And your action will be fruitless. Will be fruitless. Yeah. Okay. So after that, I'll mm. take my suction pump, mm -hmm. switch it on, and they start removing my male parts. This is also a very painstaking work mm. because you have to make sure that you suck everything out. Okay. So if you can watch this first florist that mm -hmm. I just did, mm. you'll notice that the male part 
has been removed. Let me see if you can see this part. You see that you don't see anything yellow inside? Yes, yes. It means I've removed the male part. Okay. And I'll do the same for, for all, all that the you rest. Have. Okay. Yes. So before. what you have removed, yeah. what are you going to do to it? We are going to discard it. Ah. We don't need it. That is the male part uh -huh. that is supposed to fertilize it, yeah. which okay. we don't want it to fertilize. Right. Okay. So we okay. just discard. Okay. So we'll continue the process until we finish every every one that you yes, cast. Yes, so that you don't see any male here. That's fine. If you don't see any male here mm -hmm. again, then this flower can be declared a female. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, that's fine. So that it will look like the other crops, like Popo. You mm. know Popo has a male and a female, mm. right? It's not like that. Mm. Uh -huh. So I'm going to remove each of them. Okay. You see that it is sucking it. Okay. So I'll remove each until I finish. Okay. 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 Right. So let me continue with the rest. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Fosu, yeah. it means that you would have to do this one after the other. One after the other. Is that yeah. what you do every time? Every time. <laughs> that wow. is why Prof was saying from the beginning that breeding rice is a painstaking work. Of course, I understand. So this is what the breeder goes through yes. before you even get your first generation. Okay. Before you continue with the other generation mm. until he told you, mm. until the lines are stabilized. Mm. So it's a very painstaking work. Okay. Yeah. All right. So after removing all mm. the yellow mm -hmm. content from it, mm -hmm. then you now bring the other... Uh, Male, right. which I will do for you to see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so viewers, if you're watching us, this is the Ghanaian farmer. We are all the way in Crops Research Institute in Fumeswa in Kumase, in Ashanti region. And we found ourselves in a department where they breed rice. So that at the end of the day, it goes through a lot of products. They give it to seed breeders and it gets to uh, the other line in the value chain. Then farmers will finally have their seeds to actually go and plant in the field. But these are the process that it goes through. If you're a farmer and you don't appreciate anybody today you should appreciate the seed breeders for yeah. <laughs> the good work they do it is a lot of what i mean this one if you, if you give it to do you have to put bamboo on the side if i remove one i eat one bamboo <laughs> all right one bamboo. <laughs> okay so Mr. Foso, this will take yes. the whole day trust me yes but we'll finish we'll just do okay. a few and finish very soon so that we can make the crosses for you to see right, how the process right. tastes like hmm. so as i was saying before we have designated this as our meal and then I've taken this panicles from the meal which is supposed to have pollen grains that have removed from the from the um, female. Mm. So now this is a meal and this is a female. So I will just brush over this meal part on the flower. Mm. Okay. I think you, you might have seen some dust falling on it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Small, small. Yes. That is a meal part, which okay. is the pollen grains. So it will enter into the flower. Uh -huh and then will fall on the stigma okay. and they will fertilize it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the outcome you are going to get, which we will show you some, is the F1 seed, seed. which is a combination of two mm. individuals. Mm. Yeah. And that is where the breeding starts. So you, so you, you don't allow honey to come and do your pollination and crossing for you? They are, they are natural you pollinators. To do your yeah, they are natural pollinators uh -huh. and they may not pollinate what we want. Uh -huh, because they do it randomly. Okay. So you can't rely on them. Yeah. Uh, that is why we do it ourselves. Okay. Yeah. All right, then I understand. Mm. I understand. So you are sure that after this one, this one will get pregnant? Yeah? Exactly. So after you have done pollinating, yes. introducing your... After your, the man has impregnated the woman. Exactly. You need to cover it. The reason is that as time goes on, the other flowers will start opening uh -huh. and they may also cross and you get contamination. Okay. You may not go get what you want. Okay. So it is always important to cover it with a with a material right. so that it will prevent foreign pollen from from entering, entering. yeah i see so we have our our improvised mm -hmm. brown paper mm. which i'm going to use to cover it mm. so after i finish covering it i'll have to make sure that it's it sticks to the plant so that it doesn't remove mm. so i um, may use a stapler it's very tight yes okay. and it also prevents insects from also destroying your, uh -huh. your cross all right so, so how long will the covering be on the How covering, will this brown paper be covering it? The, the F1 seed, the seed uh -huh. will come out after 25 days. After 25 days? Yes. Then so I can you remove can, the covering? Yes, and then even harvest. All right. But after seven days, uh -huh. you see that it will start coming, but it will mm -hmm. start drying 
maybe 25 days later. Okay. But we allow it to be there mm. until it dries and then we'll remove. Okay. Yeah, so that is approximately 25 okay. days. Okay, so after 25 days, what do I see then? So oh, okay. after 25 days, this is what you are going to see. You can see they look half naked. The reason why they are half naked is that is the scissors that I was using. Somewhere yes. covered. Because you remember when we were emasculating, yes. we cut. Yes. But it doesn't affect the plant in terms of germination. Okay. It will still germinate. Okay. So these are F1Cs, which is a product of what we just did. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. And so this is a combination of two parents. It's just like you. Uh -huh. You are a combination of your father and your mother. Yes. So yes. you are like an F1. You are like okay. just like this. All yeah. right. So after mm. 25 days, I'm going to see this. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well understood. And after you cover it with mm -hmm. your brown paper, you need mm -hmm. to give information. The information you are going to provide here. I have uh, to write on it. Yes. The okay. date you made the cross. Uh -huh. The female. Uh -huh. You write the name of the female. Okay. And then you write the name of the male. Okay. And then also the person who did the cross. Very They're important. Passing. Yes. Uh, but why so that if there is any issue, we'll know that I can call you, you and did find it. Out. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So All that right. is the information I'll write. Uh -huh. So I think today is 7th. Yes. So I'll write 7th June 2023. Okay. And then usually we have the labels here. So this female mm. is called T6. So I'll write T6 here. It's, it's a segregating line. So mm -hmm. it's not a line that mm. has been stable yeah, for now. And then, yes, or you can even write your initials. Okay. And the male, so I'll check the name of the male. Mm. Okay, so this male is IDSA85. Okay. So I'll write IDSA85. So it means that the female face yes. crossing the. Yes, and then, and then you write your initials on okay. your name. So I'll write Ofosu here. All right. And then you staple to hold your paper and you are done. Mm -hmm. After 25 days, you see this. Indeed. Now I understand why Dr. Mm -hmm. kept saying it's a painstaking <laughs> process. Mm -hmm. If you see your rice on the shelves and you are enjoying it back home, mm -hmm. this is what it goes through finally mm -hmm. before the farmer gets it from the seed uh, people and then go and cultivate it. It grows and then you start enjoying. So this is still the Ghanaian farmer all the way in the Cross Research Institute so. Fumensoa in Kumasi in the Ashanti region. We are bringing the interview to a close, but I'm sure these have been very insightful for you as a farmer or an aspiring from an agri investor or a follower of farming. Today has been very enlightening. I'm going to wrap it up all with Dr. Asante to find out about operational challenges, what is their major, major need. And he says a private person. So you can decide, I don't want to do farming. You want to be a private seed breeder. You can go into that business. But we'll find out how much you'll be needing to actually set up such a business. I'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. So we are bringing our interview today on rice breeding to a conclusion. But we are going to quickly uh, take a look at the operational challenges of these a line of work doc what would be your main operational challenges as rice breeders yeah so um the biggest challenge is uh, consistent funding mm. so uh, as you you could see from our operations mm. our operations is based on cycles right. uh, so you cannot start the process and end it somewhere you you, you lose it okay. you, you lose these are bi biological material so if you don't continually work on them you, you you lose them so you need even if the funding is not that huge we, you need consistent funding mm -hmm. to, to to be able to breed varieties all the time and i i as i told you before mm -hmm. no variety is a silver bullet that will solve all, all the problems mm -hmm. you take it to the field mm -hmm. and then you you come and do your engine room work you you, you continually work to 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 improve it mm -hmm. and even anticipate the challenges and the diseases and things uh, that may come up in future mm -hmm. and you start w w w w working on them okay. the, the next one is infrastructure okay, okay so w w we need a lot of infrastructure mm -hmm. so you see this our net house here it is something that we have done on our own mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a using our local mm -hmm. local knowledge Materials. ideally mm -hmm. it should be a much more sophisticated Facility. Uh, uh, facility okay. than we have here okay. yeah so so those facilities are also mm. important mm. In, in infrastructure even the fields mm. it, it takes a lot of money mm -hmm. to develop rice fields at the time that we are ready to test in the fields you have to create well level bonded field laser leveled mm. to, to be able to and that costs a lot of money okay. 
um, irrigation you right. cost a lot of money so we need all that all that thing for 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 the work to go on okay. that infrastructure right. and then equipment okay. okay basic equipment you yeah. saw the emasculator that yes. we used yes. you you need a lab a laboratory mills mm. because as i told you mm -hmm. rice is not just about the yield mm. it's also about the quality the way it appears mm. so at the early generation mm -hmm. you, you have to have a small milling machine exactly. where you mill and check yes. whether yes. It, will, it will be something yes. that consumers would would like, would like. Okay. so we, we need all that mm. you, you you see the 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 the, mm. the, the house there you, you need a, a cold storage mm. where you 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 keep your seat mm. so that it doesn't look it doesn't lose viability so you see all the long painstaking process that yeah. that we go through yeah. if you don't keep the seed well they are biological materials mm -hmm. if you don't keep it under cold storage mm -hmm. it will it will lose viability okay. and you have lost that genetic material forever Entirely. forever okay because each okay. genetic material is different right. yeah so we, we require all that and okay. and, all, and then of course mm -hmm. um uh, staff m motivation, m m motivation yes mm -hmm. people work hard and they need to be Motivated. Uh, motivated. Okay. Uh, the remuneration is still mm. very low. Mm. Uh, you need to be some somebody who is self motivated mm. like me mm. to to still be doing this work okay. and and to be doing it for Ghana. For how many years? Because now? for <laughs> for twenty years now. Okay. Because I have, right. I, have, I, have, I have opportunities to go. Okay. M many places. We and, need you. And get the agri sector need you and, so and get far go. better. Remuneration. I know. I think for me it's a right. it's a calling in a way okay. to, to to see Ghana right. becoming self sufficient okay. in, in rice production. Okay, doc. Yeah. So there you have it, Mr. Maxwell Dako Asante, Deputy Director, Crops Research Institute in Fumeswa, in Kumase, in the Ashanti region, and he's also a rice breeder. He has stayed and spent many hours with us, taking us through the entire process of rice breeding, and he's mentioned some of the challenges and what they will need to scale up production and what they do. So finally, Doc, um, we are rounding up our interview. Is there any last words you want to share to people who are being it farmers, those yes, who are yes, interested yes. in becoming so, rice producers and all that? Any last words? Exactly. We have the full potential mm. to become self-sufficient okay. in, in rice production. There's, there's no reason why we should be importing rice. Mm. There's a lot of inland valleys, a few irrigated schemes all over the land, the personnel, qualified breeders, qualified seed scientists, everything is right for us to achieve rice self-sufficiency. Okay. What is left is with policy mm. and investment. Okay. So we should have the right government policy which is linked with investment and then back up with resources, resources okay. and research mm. because research is continuous. Mm. Once we do that, we, we should be self-sufficient in rice production. But I'll, I'll be quick to add, to tell the private sector and even you, you young people mm -hmm. that there's a lot of opportunities in the rice value chain. Okay. I want young science, young, young agriculturists mm -hmm. to enter into the seed value chain, be, become seed growers, mm -hmm. become uh, rice grain uh, growers and mill rice and sell. We, we want people with big pairs mm -hmm. to enter into the value chain and invest. Mm -hmm. Above all, we want government to to consider rice they they, are, they already consider mm -hmm. rice as a very high priority but let, let's all get the policy right mm -hmm. and let the value chain work for, for we will become self-sufficient in the very near future thank you very much thank you nice you. nice talking to you thank you very much okay so there you have it a long interview but worth it and very insightful my name is Anyunam. please subscribe to our channel the Ghanaian farmer and if you missed it on joy prime make sure you catch up with us on uh, YouTube. If you are abroad, you are here in Ghana, you want to come for a visit, come and learn more about what Crafts Research Institute does in Fumeswa, you are free to come Google them and I'm sure you'll find their details. Book appointment and come around. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.